Okay, starting from a fresh three column grid, let's take a look at a flex box. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that a container allows you to arrange icons freeform, or rather arrange content freeform, whereas a flex box is going to structure that content in either a vertical or horizontal way. So let's add a flex box into this grid. We can choose between vertical or horizontal. Now it doesn't really matter what you choose because you can actually just change that on the right side later. But for now, I've selected a vertical flex box. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and add content into it. So if I click add and I select text, for example, you'll see that the text just appeared right in the middle. And let's make that say a heading two. Click confirm. Okay. Now when I click on the text, I can't drag it around to any spot I'd like. This is a vertical flex box and it's going to stack elements within vertically. So if I add now an image, you'll see the image goes directly below and let's set a fill on that image and scale the image size down, something smaller. Okay. Next, I'm going to add a, another text block right there. And let's just snag some lorem ipsum, paste that in here. Okay, so there's my text box and maybe I wanna shrink that down. And I probably wanna align that to the left side so it's align it left. And lastly, we'll go ahead and add a button. And the button's just going to be at the bottom. Same deal, I'm going to align that to the left and let's just change the button color from red to something like gray, perfect. So now you can see I have a vertically structured list of content. And that's what a flex box is great for when compared to a container. I can now size the flex box down and the elements within are all kind of adjusting. And as I bounce between different layouts or breakpoints, it's all staying together nicely. So don't overcomplicate your life by building a simple layout like this in a container. I recommend using a flex box. You could also change this, for example, to be a horizontal flex box. Now this is going to look weird. That does not work, but you can see what it's doing is just trying to align these things in a horizontal manner. So I'm just going to have them be vertical for now. We can also go ahead and change the spacing options within. So you've noticing that kind of, we've got a little gap above and maybe this gap here is too tight and you might be tempted to kind of click on this, but you know what? There's not really an option to drag it down. How do I make this closer? Well, that's all contained within the Flexbox sizing options. So if I click the Flexbox itself, and if you can't snag the Flexbox, remember to go to your grid and select it there. We can choose Align Within Flexbox. That's going to align the content within this Flexbox, and we have various options. We can align it all to the top. So it's basically all crammed together there, touching, but it's aligned to the top of the Flexbox. From there, we could go ahead and pad some of these things out. So we could add, say, a 20 pixel vertical padding up there. So that brings that down. Uh, we could select the image and add some padding below, but that's a little bit slow and painful to do. So what I'm going to do is select a different option within the Flexbox, and we'll choose the fourth one here, which is space between. And that's just adding an equal amount of space between all of the items within the flex box. And if I scale the flex box down, you can see the items are kind of getting a little bit closer. So again, flex boxes are meant to give you uniform look and feel with minimal hassle and customization. So that looks pretty good. And I can move my flex box around kind of within my grid as needed. That's not a problem. Now, when I go down to a different layout, let's say I'm on my tablet layout, I could actually make this flex box the full three columns there. And because I'm just editing this one breakpoint, when I go back to desktop, you'll see it's still contained within the two. And I go down to tablet and now it's on the three. And if I go down to mobile, it's in a one column layout and it looks very squished together. So maybe I'll kind of space that down a little bit. And I'm gonna to need to kind of bump my grid size up here, the heights a little bit too small. So let's say the grid can be 700 pixels and my flex box looks good at that size. So there, I'm happy with it at that layout. I'm happy with it on the tablet layout. And if I go back to my main desktop layout, that's looking really good as well. 
Now, one thing to note with a Flexbox is sometimes it's going to grab content that you may not want put in it. So an example of that is, let's say I'm going to add a little button here. And this is going to represent a sale button. I'm actually going to put the sale button out here outside of the Flexbox. Now I said never put items on the grid, but there are cases where you don't want it contained in anything. So my little button here is going to be a sale icon. I'm going to change the border style on this. Uh, let's go to rounded corner so it's a circle and let's change the button text. I'm going to double click on it and say sale. And let's say this is a little sale badge on an e-commerce site. And I want to put this overlapping the corner here. Well, that works just fine right there. But if I drag it just a little bit further over, it's going to pull it into the flex box and try and stack it vertically. So just keep that in mind. If you do want something to kind of slightly overlap the side of a flex box, you can place it right on the grid, but just make sure it doesn't go so far that it gets sucked into the vertical layout. Another example of a flex box that you'll probably see commonly used is if we add a new flex box and let's go horizontal this time. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And within, I'm going to add an image. Okay, and I'll size my image down here to be about that size. And let's just left align it within the flex box. Now, keep in mind, I have the flex box selected. And if I go up here to arrange and I click center, right, left, it's going to arrange the flex box within the grid. And that's why I mentioned everything on the right side, you kind of want to think zoomed out and zoomed in. So the range options here are for the flex box itself on the grid. Below that, we have a line in flex box. That's where I can change the items within that flex box. So if I go left and then let's just duplicate this item, it's going to stack it right beside. And if I duplicate again, now we have three of them all stacked together. We can also add a little bit of space. I'm going to change this to space around. So it's going to give us kind of an equal amount of space between items. And you can see why a flex box is the superior choice for building a layout that has uniform items like this. Now we can just double click on each of our images, change out the image per box, and we are good to go. And of course, this is going to beautifully reshuffle itself per layout, and we can go into some of these smaller layouts and tweak it as needed. So I hope that's clear why you need the different types of containing elements, either the container, which is for freeform design, or the Flexbox, which is there for creating uniform vertical or horizontal lists of items. In our last video, let's go ahead and add some of the pre-made sections that are available to you and kind of just dig into them and explore how they're made, what they're using, whether they're containers or flex boxes, and how everything looks across different breakpoints.